Welcome to Tech Nation, where we explore the latest advancements and issues in science and technology. In today's video, we dive into a topic that affects all of us, yet often goes unnoticed, the decrease in oxygen levels in the world. Despite its crucial role in sustaining life, the amount of oxygen in our atmosphere has been gradually decreasing over time, posing a silent threat to the planet and its inhabitants. Join us as we explore the science behind this phenomenon, the causes, and the potential consequences. From the impact on human health to the implications for the environment, this is a topic that demands attention. So, sit back, relax, and let's explore the silent threat of decreasing oxygen levels in the world. You might be thinking, why should I care about oxygen levels? I breathe just fine. But here's the thing. Oxygen is not only crucial for our survival, but for the survival of all living organisms on this planet. Without oxygen, life as we know it would cease to exist. Ah, oxygen, the gas that we all need to breathe, the element that keeps us alive, the molecule that makes life possible. But, have you ever wondered what makes up the air we breathe, and how much of it is actually oxygen? Well, Let's dive into the fascinating world of oxygen composition in Earth's atmosphere. To begin with, the Earth's atmosphere is primarily composed of nitrogen, oxygen, and argon, with trace amounts of other gases such as carbon dioxide, neon, and helium. Oxygen makes up approximately 21% of the air we breathe, which is just the right amount to keep us alive and healthy. However, Oxygen levels are not fixed and can fluctuate over time due to several factors, including human activities and natural causes. Human activities, such as deforestation, burning of fossil fuels, and industrial processes, have all contributed to the decrease in oxygen levels in our atmosphere. Natural causes, such as volcanic eruptions, wildfires, and changes in oceanic currents, can also have an impact on oxygen levels. But, Let's not forget the historical trends in oxygen levels. Over the past 800,000 years, oxygen levels have varied between 15% and 30%, with an average of approximately 20%. It's fascinating to think that the air we breathe today is very similar to what the dinosaurs were breathing millions of years ago. Oh boy! Hold on to your hats because we're about to dive into some of the factors that are contributing to the decrease in oxygen levels in our atmosphere. Brace yourself for some hard truths, but don't worry, I'll keep things witty. First up, we have deforestation and land use changes. Trees are one of the primary sources of oxygen in our atmosphere, and when we cut them down, we're reducing the amount of oxygen they produce. This is because trees absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen through photosynthesis. Deforestation is a major problem in many parts of the world, and it's affecting the balance of oxygen in our atmosphere. Next, we have the burning of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels, such as coal, oil, and natural gas, are used to generate energy for everything from powering our homes to fueling our cars. However, when we burn these fuels, we release carbon dioxide into the air, which can decrease oxygen levels. Additionally, burning fossil fuels also releases harmful pollutants into the air, which can have a range of negative effects on human health. Climate change and oceanic effects are also contributing factors to the decrease in oxygen levels. As temperatures rise, the oceans absorb less oxygen, which can lead to dead zones where marine life can't survive. Additionally, climate change can also lead to changes in weather patterns, which can affect the growth of plants and other photosynthetic organisms that produce oxygen. Now, Let's talk about the consequences of low oxygen levels in our atmosphere. Spoiler alert! It's not good. When there's less oxygen in the air we breathe, it can have serious effects on our bodies and overall health. First and foremost, low oxygen levels can lead to hypoxia, which is a condition where there's not enough oxygen reaching our body tissues. This can cause shortness of breath, headaches, and fatigue, and in severe cases, it can even lead to organ damage or death. Decreased oxygen levels in the atmosphere can also increase the risk of respiratory illnesses such as asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. These conditions can be particularly dangerous for vulnerable populations such as children, the elderly, 
and people with underlying health conditions. Speaking of vulnerable populations, let's talk about the impact of decreased oxygen levels on them. People living in areas with poor air quality, such as those near industrial sites or in urban areas, are at higher risk of developing respiratory problems due to exposure to harmful pollutants. Additionally, those living in poverty or with limited access to healthcare may be less equipped to handle the health risks associated with low oxygen levels. Ah, the great outdoors. It's beautiful, isn't it? But did you know that the decrease in oxygen levels in our atmosphere is having a serious impact on the natural world? First up, we have the effects on biodiversity. When there's less oxygen in the air, it can make it more difficult for animals to breathe, which can lead to decreased fertility and increased mortality rates. This can have a ripple effect on ecosystems, as the loss of one species can disrupt the balance of an entire ecosystem. Speaking of ecosystems, the impact of decreased oxygen levels can be felt far beyond just the air we breathe. In aquatic environments, low oxygen levels can lead to the formation of dead zones, where marine life can't survive. This can have serious implications for the fishing industry and the livelihoods of people who depend on the ocean for food and income. But wait, there's more. The decrease in oxygen levels can also have a cascading effect on entire ecosystems, as it can impact the growth of plants and other photosynthetic organisms that produce oxygen. This can lead to a vicious cycle of decreasing oxygen levels, which can have devastating consequences for the natural world. So, what can we do to mitigate the impact of decreased oxygen levels on the environment? One solution is to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels and transition to cleaner, more sustainable forms of energy. Additionally, protecting and preserving natural habitats and reducing pollution can also help to maintain oxygen levels and protect the biodiversity and ecosystems that make our planet so amazing. So, we've established that decreasing oxygen levels are a serious threat to our health and the environment. But don't worry, my dear viewers, for there are solutions to this problem. Here are a few ways we can combat decreasing oxygen levels. First up, we have conservation and reforestation efforts. Trees play a crucial role in producing oxygen, so planting more of them and preserving existing forests can help to maintain oxygen levels in the atmosphere. Plus, who doesn't love a good tree-hugging session? Next on the list, we have alternative energy sources. By transitioning to clean energy sources like solar and wind power, we can reduce our reliance on fossil fuels and decrease the amount of harmful pollutants released into the air. Plus, who doesn't love a good windmill? But wait, there's more. We can also work to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, which are a major contributor to climate change and the decrease in oxygen levels. This can be done by things like driving less, using public transportation, and reducing waste. Plus, who doesn't love a good excuse to hop on a bike or recycle more? Finally, we have technological solutions. Researchers are currently working on ways to capture and store carbon dioxide, which can help to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and maintain oxygen levels in the atmosphere. Plus, who doesn't love a good science experiment? And that's a wrap, folks. We hope you enjoyed our exploration of the silent threat of decreasing oxygen levels in the world. Remember, while it may be a silent threat, it's one that demands our attention and action. From the impact on human health to the implications for the environment, decreasing oxygen levels affect us all. But there's no need to panic, for there are solutions available to us. By implementing conservation and reforestation efforts, transitioning to alternative energy sources, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and utilizing technological solutions, we can combat this problem and preserve the planet for future generations. So, let's get to work and make a difference. As always, thank you for watching Tech Nation, where we explore the latest advancements and issues in science and technology. Stay tuned for more thought-provoking content, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell.